I can personally tell you that the nut on the LC Dragon was a miserable trip for many of us. <laughs> I spent most of my time hanging over the rail. <clears throat> um, this is my first missions trip to a, a place where I was uh, not surrounded by white people. Quite frankly, I'd been to Australia uh, when I was in college, spent eight weeks there. But uh, the very first thing that sort of slapped me in the face was the very first day we were there, uh, Tim drove us into town and just left us. Just dropped us off in the middle of, of the, you saw, and you, you probably couldn't identify what it was, but in, in the video, there was a picture of the, the central market in Haniara. Literally thousands of people uh, just packed. There's no such thing as personal space. Just packed into this market. And I can remember walking in there. It was me and Phil, and that was it. Everybody else sort of went their way, going, I really hope I don't die. <laughs> um, I really hope I'm okay. Both hands in my pockets, hanging on to my passport and my money. <laughs> By the end of the trip, it was, you walk down the main street, and you just sort of blend in. I don't know how, because we still stuck out like, stuck out like sore thumbs. But you talk to the people, it was, it was second nature. But for me, that was something that was totally brand new. Um, but it was also neat to, to meet the, uh, the, the Solomon Islanders who were Christians. And their love for God was so incredible. Uh, one thing that you didn't see in the movie or in the video, at least I didn't think, don't think it made it on there, were, were the thatched roof huts that most of them lived in. It would be a, a, a room, a one room home, maybe 10 by 10, maybe 10 by 15, and they would have 8 to 12 people in there, just crammed in there. Um, something that you did hear was the singing. The singing came out. <laughs> and all the memories came back. The people sing with all their hearts. Their love for God is just contagious. It was my privilege, one of the things that was a blessing to me is I actually got to preach the gospel in the public schools four times. That would be absolutely unheard of here in the United States. But I want to share with you just, just briefly about how difficult it is to get a Bible in the Solomon Islands. To give you an idea, the average income per capita in the Solomon Islands is 1000 to 1200 Solomon dollars a year. Now, to give you an idea, that, that it equates roughly to about 150 U.S. dollars a year. Most of these people simply subsist. A Bible and a Solomon, if, if you can find a Bible, if you can find one, it costs 200 Solomon dollars. Now, think about that for a second, folks. You're talking 15 to 20 percent of your annual income is what it costs to own a Bible. I did some research in 2009 in the United States. The average income per capita was $39,138 per person. You do the math, and 15 to 20 percent, a Bible would cost somewhere between $5,800 and $7,800 U.S. Nobody can afford them. These teens, these high schoolers, never had any hope of ever owning the Bible in their life unless they really made it in life. No hope whatsoever. You would go into the churches, and you might see one or two Bibles. The pastor would have one, and maybe one or two other people. The concept of owning the Bible was a totally foreign concept. The last, very last school, and it's the same school that uh, Phil was talking to you about with the, with the headmaster that walked us back. He told us that the school was founded in the 1940s, shortly after World War II. And in the history of the school, they had owned one Bible in approximately 65 years. One Bible for their religious education classes. You saw the, the, quote, the, the headmaster, and that was the very first school, and you heard me mention it. But the number one most important thing that impacted me 
was when that headmaster looked at us and says, when you give us this book, you are giving us life. The reason we went to the Solomon Islands was to give life. pastor asked me to give a brief challenge this evening. And if you have your Bible, take a look, please, at John chapter 20. John chapter 20 is the story, it's really the story of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In this, he appears to Mary Magdalene and then the disciples. And then finally, he appears to... <clears throat> uh, the disciples when Thomas is there. And, and John gets, gets done writing all about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and, and, and showing the proof and the witnesses. And he gets to the end of the chapter, and in verse 30 he says, And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Verse 31 says, But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. The entire purpose that John wrote this book, the number one reason that this book was written was eternal life. And folks, the truth of the matter is that most of us take this book for granted. If you were to go into my office right now and look at the bookshelf behind my desk, you'll see 10 to 12 Bibles and a couple of Greek New Testaments. The fact of the matter is, they're easy to come by here. We've grown up with it. It sits on our bookshelf and hardly ever gets touched sometimes. But I don't think often we realize what an incredible resource we have. We have the book of eternal life. And yet we go through life either not reading it, not living today the eternal life that is ours through Jesus Christ or never really sharing the truths that are in it with the people around us who are dying and going to hell every day. The truth of the matter is, folks, you don't have to go halfway around the world to the Solomon Islands to give somebody the gift of eternal life, to share with them God's gift of eternal life. The thing that changed me the most is realizing, yes, it's an incredible experience. Yes, I, I, it was worth the blood, sweat, and tears. There were scratches, not a whole lot of blood. But it was worth the sacrifice to go and do that around the world. Am I willing to sacrifice to the same extent to do that in Chattanooga, Tennessee? And that is my challenge to you this evening, to remember the value of this book to value it, to treasure it, because there are people begging for them in other parts of the world. I can't tell you how many times we had to say no. I'm sorry, I can't give you one. They're begging for it. We have so much. Do you value this book? Are you living the eternal life that's found inside its pages? Has it transformed your life? Are you sharing it with other people? That's the challenge to you tonight. Pastor.